are watching CIO TV by Enterprise IT World, a production of Accent Info Media. Hello and welcome to CIO TV. We are very honored to have with us Mr. Sridhar Kinnath Reddy, the founder and CEO of Control S with us. Thank you so much for speaking with us, sir. Now, uh, Control S is now on course to become the largest data center company in the whole world. Has this sunk in? How do you feel and how did you get there? It's amazing and uh, we thank all our uh, you know, customers and the team uh, employees to make uh, you know, help us make it possible. Uh, building tier 4 data centers is not easy. It requires not only huge investments but also a lot of persistence uh, for example to convince the government uh, to get you to power lines to and um, hundreds of obstacles. That's why uh, no one attempts tier 4 data centers and uh, when we uh, embarked on this journey 11 years ago, um, everyone warned that you, it's impossible to build a tier 4 data center in India. And I'm glad to say that uh, we've not only built uh, um, uh, one tier 4 data center, we've built now six of them and uh, we're going for a campus of seven uh, tier 4 data centers, making us the largest data, tier 4 data center provider in the uh, worldwide. So what is the current DC capacity that you have in India and where is it located? Current capacity is uh, six data centers uh, spread across uh, all metros of India. Can you tell us about the locations of your data centers? Uh, in Mumbai we have two, Hyderabad we have two and uh, then one each in Bangalore and Noida currently. And in Mumbai we have um, started a new project, it's going to be um, single largest tier 4 data center of 300 megawatt capacity and uh, this will be spread across in six buildings which will come up in two of them uh, going to come up uh, in this year in 2021 and 2021 one more building is coming up. What is your hyperscale initiative? What steps are you taking? Where are they coming up? Uh, actually hyperscale is kind of a word for large scale data centers and uh, why do we need large scale data centers? What changed is the whole ecosystem. Um, this world became completely truly digital uh, even though we've been talking about it for a long time driven by predominantly by smartphone usage. So um, the whole transformation has, is currently happening. We're in the middle of it in which uh, uh, even uh, the remotest uh, villages have uh, smartphones and uh, they, are, they are watching, they are using uh, you know, WhatsApp, they are watching TikTok uh, or Facebook and you know, videos on their phones. Right? That drove a huge demand for data. Um, and uh, the second phenomenon which made um, you know, hyperscale uh, uh, a mandatory for any country to have hyperscale data centers is the cloud. Every enterprise whether it is banking or whether it is uh, old age manufacturing or conglomerates or financial institutions, everyone are going to the cloud because of the obvious benefits. And uh, that led to a huge um, uh, need for very, very large scale data centers. To give you an example, last 10 years, from to we started in 2007 till 2019, the capacity that we have built and, and occupied, uh, we have equal to that we have uh, occupied in 2020, in 2019 itself. In just one year, it was equal to 11 years of data. And the, uh, and this kind of a, a demand um, requires um, a, a, a not just a data center building uh, but a data center campuses. That's what we are building right now. So what is your hyperscale initiative? What steps are you taking? Where are they coming up? Uh, one is in Bombay, 300 megawatt. It's coming up with a 220 kVA uh, substation. Again, first time in India um, of this, this large capacity. 
and uh, this is uh, over 2 million square feet at single location um, and a similar campus is being um, planned in Hyderabad as well. So how are new technologies like artificial intelligence and automation helping you scale up your large data centers? Uh, yeah, I mean we have a specialized department for uh, artificial intelligence um, and uh, robotic process automation. What we are doing is um, uh, we in the next five years we wanted to uh, automate at least 80 percent of the all the tasks which are being done. Uh, this not only kind of saves time but also improves accuracy and uh, improves the overall quality of data management. So for scaling up you don't need to build uh, more, you don't need extra land, you just need these uh, technologies to offer even more services in the future. Uh, newer technologies are helping the data uh, to shrink the data, right? I mean if you have seen the movie Honey I Shrunk the Kids, um, you know it's the same thing. Uh, it happening in, uh, in, in data, not just once but multiple times in the, in the similar scale. For Just to give you an example, uh, what used to fit in a room uh, full of computers uh, now gets fit uh, 20 years ago, now can go into just one U uh, this size server. Yeah. And uh, th it, it is not ending here. And um, well, I can clearly see that uh, what will go into uh, a room full of these one news, you know, servers will again going back to a rack in the next five to ten years. So that's the biggest. Otherwise, uh, we would have we we would need to build a small cities to accommodate the data. Yeah, and. Um, Apart from that, that the artificial intelligence can, uh, there, there is a, um, a huge duplication of data happening inadvertently by, you know, in terms of number of backup copies or in terms of same data being kept in hundreds of locations, etc. So artificial intelligence will find all that and uh, make sure that, uh, you know, very limited number of copies are maintained. Even in every corporate, we are seeing that the same file is sitting on hundreds of computers uh, or servers. You spoke about smartphones and internet penetration. What would be the future drivers of the growth of the DC market in our country? Uh, apart from these two, are continues to likely to continue to grow. Yeah, uh, because smartphone usage is still under 15 percent in India, so that means there is a 6x growth possible. Cloud adoption is still in the similar range. You know, there is a 6, 7x uh, growth um, potential is there for even the cloud. Uh, there are other factors which are driving this. For example, data sovereignty law, or which is likely to come, and. Uh, uh, Due to historic reasons of our telecom landscape, etc., most of our data is kept out overseas. And uh, if this law comes into force, in the, so there is there will be a huge sudden jump in the in the demand. Uh, plus, um, the financial um, uh, sector uh, is going through a big change. For example, you know, new age banks have come, payment bank, banks have come. The whole banking is becoming digital uh, and the changing business models which are primarily based on cloud and data centers. Um, and um, there are smaller uh, activities which are happening, you know, the whole entertainment industry is shifting from coaxial to fiber and OTT players are coming up in a big way and the, the, that itself is driving the demand further and so on and so forth. The, um, for example, I mean, uh, cloud kitchens are, you know, players like Swiggy or, and the way we use data in our day-to-day -day lives like security um, or the usage of maps. Um, so all of these are driving uh, data explosion. Which verticals or which are the industries which are moving towards co-location? Almost all verticals, almost all. Yeah, and uh, who are the biggest consumers? Uh, BFSI is big, e-commerce is big, and uh, uh, cloud companies, they are the biggest users today. If you, if you ask me last through three years, it's the cloud companies, it's the SaaS companies. 
which are driving this uh, market. So is the demand for data centers spread evenly through the industry? So is it only the large players that are capturing the larger chunks of uh, the DC market? No, we serve all, all, cli all clients. We have on one side, we have Fortune 20 customers, um, which need huge capacities. And uh, on the other side, we have uh, uh, small SMBs. Um, and uh, their needs are different obviously. So we have different uh, delivery, service de delivery uh, teams to cater to these varying needs of these uh, enterprises. So we have thousands of smaller customers as well uh, who are growing fast at the same time. And um, for example, India's Inc. 100, we have a separate division and uh, almost half of India Inc. is uh, um, top 100 are in our data centers today and about 15 of the fortune 100 the global fortune 100 are in our data centers today so what is your competitive advantage why if i'm a company why would i come to you and not any of your peers yeah we are a disruptive player uh, in in the industry um, we give um, let's say someone 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 is giving you two cars uh, of mercedes benz uh, for one Honda, uh, how do you feel? That's how our customers um, uh, discover us to their pleasant surprise. Uh, we give tier 4 data center, we give the highest SLA and at the same time charge them less um, and as well as we give energy savings of almost 20% to our customers. So it's like a win-win and when for them. That's the reason why Control S has grown uh, 2x the competition's growth rates. It's uh, 1.5x more profitable and it became the largest data center company um, in 12 years as against the average age of competition which is almost uh, 30 years. So you're cost competitive. You're getting two Mercedes in the price of a Honda. But other than just my bottom line, what else do you offer? Do you give good solutions when it comes to cyber security and data protection? And what about the, the backup? Well, you know, in a country where uh, power is so unreliable, uh, is my data going to be safe in the face of a, a power cut? Actually, Tier 4 guarantees that. Um, tier 4 is a cut above um, the Tier 3 data centers in every area that you, meant, you just mentioned. There is security, whether it is uh, uptime, whether it is uh, you know backup, data backups, or um, the um, resiliency of the buildings, uh, building against the natural calamities. Every area, it's a much superior spec. And um, and when I said you get two cars for the price of one car with Control S. Um, Tier 4 exactly does that. It gives two parallel systems uh, to protect your data um, and that's what makes Tier 4 special. So what, what's happening is that our clients are getting two cars but are paying for one. And also these cars give a much better fuel efficiency. What I mean to say is that any customer who comes and keeps their data with us they are contributing 20% to the carbon footprint because our data centers consume 20% less power than the competition. So how are your data centers uh, sustainable? What steps are you taking? Are you using renewable energy? We have done over 200 innovations over last 10 years and most of them are um, related to energy conservation. We changed the designs, we changed the equipment, we used more copper in our transformers for example. Um, the, the way that we are, data centers are designed are, are completely unorthodox from an energy um, uh, standpoint. We've used, uh, even on our buildings, uh, we've built uh, the new building that we have done uh, is uh, completely solar, um, solar facade and uh, all these buildings are LEED Platinum certified 
and uh, we spend a lot more money on cutting edge technology than, than anyone else I mean, and uh, you know so on and so forth I mean we won several awards for our innovation in energy management we, and also we won um, continuously this is the eighth year the most energy efficient uh, building in India so that's why uh, controllers uh, data centers uh, consume much less power. So you're cost competitive, you're reliable and you're also environmentally responsible. What else do you offer to your customers by way of services by excellence that is stick with you? We are a full, full service data center as you could say so, uh, all the way up to application management. Uh, we provide um, complete cyber security uh, as well as compliance driven uh, workload needs. Um, uh, apart from the routine uh, OSDB network management, etc., and uh, we've also built deep expertise in um, uh, standard business application management like SAP or um, Oracle or uh, Microsoft Technologies. Um, all standard business applications, we manage them, and we give a single SLA uh, for our clients at application management. You also have edge data centers. What are these and why are they required? Uh, they serve different need. Um, edge data centers are uh, needed now. Imagine somebody sitting in Assam. He is uh, uh, requesting a Netflix movie and if Netflix is only hosted let's say in Bombay, this movie has to travel all the way and the same movie is being watched by in Assam by let's say 10,000 people and the data has to travel 10,000 times let's say. Instead if there is an edge data center it you know directly gets served from there giving a much better quality of service to consumers and costs much less. So a number of applications like this are coming up which requires the local area uh, distribution of the content. Most of the times if you see, you make a WhatsApp call probably uh, is, or you are chatting with someone probably is, is sitting in the same city as you because your communication needs are with locals are a lot more than outside people. So all of these uh, require uh, edge data centers and India is growing, growing big time and um, uh, it, it's uh, viable uh, uh, as a business to set up edge data centers now as well. Can you briefly talk to us about your customer base? You said that you have uh, you know, the top 100 companies and the, Fortune 15, the top Fortune 15 companies who work with you. Can you give us some names and can you tell us how these relationships have grown over the years because of the data center? Um, you know, these large enterprises, they would give, uh, make us sign strict non-disclosures, but let me take a few case studies. Um, uh, we have 50, over 50% 50 market share of all f multinational banks operating in India. Uh, one such bank is Standard Chartered Bank and uh, they have been our client for over 8 years. Uh, similarly, um, the world's largest credit card company is with us, world's largest bank is with us. Oh, and, uh, uh, even in insurance, um, five or six of the top ten insurance companies operating in India are in our data centers. And um, Tata AG, for example, is one such customer. And uh, uh, let's take the largest manufacturing industrial houses of India. Uh, most of their workloads are managed by us. One such client is uh, Adani Group itself or JK Tires or, or multinational conglomerates like Panasonic or India's largest bank or India's third largest private sector bank like Axis Bank. To that of uh, India's largest e-commerce player Flipkart. And, uh, uh, also, 50% um, uh, of the uh, 
hyperscale cloud customers are also in our data centers. So you have huge expansion plans. Are there any regulatory or compliance challenges that you have faced or foresee you will face in the future? Um, of course, every business in India goes through these. Um, unfortunately, um, India is still, um, uh, you know, uh, learning to uh, and in yet to reach these care, these the uh, developed country status where businesses can focus on their business. Uh, today's entrepreneurs have to spend considerable more than one third the time to deal with uh, compliances, uh, regulatory compliances. Yeah. So it's the same with for us, and um, a little bit more so because we have to build infrastructure. Uh, so yeah, we have to deal with it, and uh, we will be very happy uh, to note that the government is planning to come up with a new data center policy, and we hope that will solve some of the problems. You've already spoken about a lot of triggers for growth for your company. But as an industry in itself, where do you think the data center industry is headed 10 years from now? Um, the industry will grow at at least 25% CAGR for the next 10 years to come. And, mm, and um, this is despite the data compression happening, new technologies coming on board, yeah, at least. Um, so it's a humongous growth, I would say. Yeah. Thanks so much, uh, Mr. Shekhar Tanapuradi, for speaking with us. We wish you all the very best uh, for uh, your growth plans. And uh, we look forward to having you again with us and speaking, you, speaking with you again uh, 10 years from now and perhaps sooner as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure. Yeah. Are you using renewable energy for your data centers? And what is the idea behind using the renewable energy? We have uh, now, Control has started a, a big energy initiative. Uh, our goal is to um, produce all the power consumed by these data centers through solar or wind energy in the next six years. Um, these are large scale um, solar farms uh, and the first one is coming up in uh, Maharashtra. Uh, and we are making every attempt to make them live by next 12 months or so. And uh, every uh, state um, that we are operating, we are planning to um, uh, produce our own solar uh, power. So this renewable energy, is it only for captive use or uh, if ever you are going to be surplus, would you be selling it, will it also become a profit center? You know, giving tier 4 alone, um, tier 4 data centers are two cars uh, alone uh, is not going to solve the customer issues. They need to be serviced, they need to make sure uh, that uh, in the event of any uh, issues there is a um, consistent quality of service delivery is provided to our customers. We have taken hundreds of initiatives to help our customers journey with us easier um, to prevent their uh, downtimes, to um, ensure that their data is well protected against cyber attacks, to make sure that their databases are tuned in properly and are efficient, to make sure that their customers um, get the faster downloads of the data, so on and so forth. I mean, so to ensure this, we have set up a close to now a 2,000 people um, service delivery uh, centers across India. We have established uh, and invented a lot of processes and the technology to help them deliver these services more and more efficiently. Also, we take um, daily feedback from our customers and change uh, the way our company operates. We are extremely, uh, the way we develop the culture is absolutely customer centric, a total ownership driven approach and um, a company which is learning every day based on the customer remarks and their needs. 
this if you ask me is the biggest contributor more than tier 4 in uh, ensuring that our clients uh, stay with us and grow with us and continue to refer new customers. Thank you so much for speaking with us at CIO TV and sharing with us your company's plans for your future growth. We wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much for accommodating me. You are watching CIO TV by Enterprise IT World, a production of Accent Info Media.